everybody. We're back. We're back with my warrior beauty sitting next to me. My beautiful warrior beauty. So we're calling this segment two of our update. It's been a long time since we've been on camera talking to everybody, but it's it's due. We're due. In the first segment, we talked a lot about the holidays, um, the scans that she had of her brain and back and how it showed progression. And that led to her being taken off the clinical trial, which, yeah. So we moved here for the clinical trial. We picked up our lives and moved to a strange land, this land called Texas. That we love. That we love. We do love it. It's awesome. It's not like moving to Oz. <laughs> um, God bless Texas. But yeah, we left all our friends and family behind and moved here to go on the clinical trial. And now here we are a year later and 27 treatments in. 31. 31. She made it to 31. 31. Um, which is very good. And um, the whole goal of the of the trial was to try and keep the cancer under control for as long as possible so that other treatments could be um, administered or new treatments that are coming out daily it seems like mm -hmm. um, to help her prolong her life um, but yeah we the doctors are trying to figure out eat, so <sighs> I don't know. It's a lot. The, so the clinical trial, we were taken, we we're no longer qualified on the clinical trial because we have progression. She has progression in her CSF in her brain, um, which means the cancer got worse and is, is not considered under control or stable at this point. Um, the rest of her body is stable and under control, but the, the brain and the CSF are, are not cooperating at this time which they will, they'll get in line soon, but um, we just gotta figure out how. Um, so there's still a lot of treatment options that she, the doctor threw out. She had, uh, she's one of the best in her field, like the leading in the world um, in melanoma. And she um, was talking about another clinical trial that's just starting up, but apparently it's still too new um, to start. So they're still working on that and that may be in our future. And just for now, off, it's denied. But. Yeah, for now we're not. And God has His reasons for for protecting Christina and not letting her get on that trial yet. And we believe that, and so that's where we're at with that second trial. But it still may be something that that might be in our future. We don't know. Um, Doctor Glitza threw out tons of treatment options. She was just like it was like a hurricane of ideas of. Well, we can still do this, and we can still do that. There's still another round of IL-2, whole brain radiation. There's still a lot of treatments out there that are possible, and they're talking about still treating her uh, intrathecally and intravenously with immuno, uh, the immunotherapies. So that's still good, even though we're not on the trial, that's not off the plate. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other people who have been off this trial that have still had success with treatment and we know several of them and that's very reassuring and comforting. Thank you, I don't wanna name names we in the can. video, but yeah. um, you know who you are if you're watching this and we're, we're thankful for your journeys and that you've kind of paved that way for us and that we know there's still a lot of hope. Thank uh, God for them, that's why I called them right after this happened. I was like, I needed to talk to you because we needed hope. I mean, not, we do have faith and we have hope. And I still believe that in my journey, the cure will be found. It will. But um, it's still very hard for it this like hit us like a ton of bricks. So yeah, it's just hard. <clears throat> Honestly, I don't know if we've still really processed all that or or like taking it all in it just kind of seems surreal yeah, it's uh, very weird to not be there every two weeks when you spend an entire year of your life somewhere every single two weeks you know, you know the whole routine all of a sudden it's like i'm not reporting to 
my doctor's assistant anymore. I'm not seeing the nurses I see every few weeks anymore. It's like everything just stopped. And um, I mean, I still am on my targeted pills that I take every day. They increase that dosage, so it's not like nothing is being done to help. It's a lot of change all of a sudden in her treatment and in our routine and um, they did radiate her back after she was in excruciating pain we had took her down to er and they radiated her back and uh, she went through five treatments of that to me that seemed like it took too long to get there but um, too long uh, for them to do it Mm, yeah, yeah, I mean, I wanted it. I don't know. Well, you saw me in so much pain for That's, like over a month. Like, well, it was progressing steadily for, yeah, what was it three weeks? I mean, and, and at the end, it was, she wasn't sleeping. She was literally up all night crying. And I'm like, That's it. We gotta, we gotta go to the ER. And so we took her down to MD Anderson, the doctor was fantastic. That's when they finally figured it out. And they, yeah, yeah, they figured it out that she had um, inflammation around her spine and it was impinging on her nerves, causing double sciatic pain to go down both of her legs, causing numbness, causing like uh, feeling like stabbing pains and electrocution pains. Like her, her nerve bundle was being pressed upon constantly because of the inflammation around the tumors that had settled there. The lesions had come together um, and settled at the bottom of her cerebrospinal fluid canal causing all this. So she had five rounds of radiation and she seemed like, even after the first one, it seemed like there was some relief. Um, and then the more radiation she had, the, the better it became. However, we're still at I would say she's at like 60% mobility right now. We've had to change the way we live around here. Um, and got... Um, and for anybody that knows me, that's not normal at all. Like, I'm usually... <clears throat> yeah, she hated the fact that we had to buy her a cane. They, they made her uh, use a walker. We had to get a commode for the toilet, we had to get a shower chair, we had to get, even get a stool so she can get into bed because our bed's a little high. Um, a lot of different changes that take away some of her uh, freedoms and mobility and feeling of independence and... Like driving is not an option uh, anymore. She barely ever drive again. And uh, walking is, is hard. So no. a lot of changes that just happen all of a sudden. So that, like when we say it, it's hard to process, it's because, yeah, it just seemed like a lot happened very, very fast, very quickly. And, um, I, I keep telling Christine, I feel like I need to have a breakdown. I feel like I should be bawling my eyes out, but I can't. It won't come. It won't. When I start, and then it ends up like this, where I just can't. I just because I feel like if I start, I won't stop, or I need to be strong for her and yeah. support her. So, I mean, I don't know if we're even making sense or explaining this right, but this is I'm just kind of free flowing, and yeah. I don't know what to say. I felt like I needed we needed to because people have been asking, and then it gets difficult because it seems like everybody asks at the same time, kind of. I don't know. It's, I think they're used to us being okay every couple of weeks, but and so when we're not and when we're quiet, they're like, "Are you guys?" It's a blessing to have so many family and friends that care and that help us when we need it and would do anything for us. Um, but when we're not able to process the information and put it together, it's hard to relay that to people, even people close to us that we talk to all the time. It's hard to express these feelings without a multi-segment video that we have waited to put out. You know, I mean, how do you how do you 
do that in a text? How do you do that in a FaceTime video or a, I mean, it's a lot to dump on people. It's a lot to process for even us. And, and I don't think we're, we've, like I said, I don't think we've processed it all, even still. We're still trying to sort through it and be okay with it and come to terms with it and figure out the next step because the doctors are trying to figure out the next step. We don't know the next step. We're, we're, the next step is trusting God and and letting the doctors do their thing and, and trusting that there's more treatments out there. And, and, and how do you tell your family and friends? We don't know. We don't know what the next step is. It's, God, it's in God's hands. It's in the doctor's hands. There's a lot of options out there, and so far, um, they want her to get through this radiation. Uh, part of the radiation healing was being on high-dose steroids. So she even had to go off of her, her uh, medication for, I think, a week while she was doing the radi radiation. And then she restarted that, but also restarted high-dose steroids. Um, she's gonna blow her nose. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so the high dose steroids and those were bad, nightmare. She's today is the last day she's taking them. We had to taper off of them, but that was one of the things along with the radiation she needed to do to get the swelling down in her back so she could have mobility and not have all the pain in her legs and and um, it really reduced the pain it didn't take it all away but it reduced it she's still in pain today but it's manageable um, they gave her morphine both high um, long acting and short acting so she had breakthrough pain she can take the strong morphine but um, we don't know where we're at with the morphine other than she still takes the long acting twice a day to deal with the pain that the radiation and the steroids didn't take away. Um, but the steroids themselves caused all kinds of problems with her still, her digestion, her, her bowel movements, not sleeping. She's had insomnia for this whole year since she had insomnia of 2021 because initially it was the pain and then, then the steroids cause sleeplessness. Um, her adrenaline glands are going all the time to try and um, fight the pain and fight yeah. the get a handle on everything on the on the inflammation. So, as a byproduct of that, her sleep has just been non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, and eating, it's like I. I eat, I'm hungry, I eat, but then most of the time it comes right back up. So I can't eat very much, keep much down. But then I'm gaining crazy amounts of weight because of the steroids. Even though That's just water retention. Yeah. That's not um, actual weight gain. It's just her ankles and feet and the calves have gotten all puffy and swollen. We've had to use the compression socks and having to keep her legs elevated and make sure she drinks tons and tons of water so she's going to the bathroom all the time because of it so I don't know it's like you take all these medications to fight the cancer and then those medications have side effects so then you have to take medications to fight the side effects from the medications <laughs> that you're taking in the cancer and then those cause side effects that you have to deal with and there's nothing you can do um, but it's getting us to the next Right. We have to hold faith and hold strong that that's temporary and we're, we're uh, it's taking us to you know, what, are, what we need to do next, which we don't know what that is yet. But I hope this does make sense because I feel bad people that have checked in with me lately. Sometimes I'm even like copy and paste because, oh, how are you feeling? How are you doing? It's kind of a long explanation. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Sometimes we don't even know. We go through each day. Um, I mean, 
hopeful but so, still not knowing that. how we're gonna do until we get up out of bed and, and figure out what today's gonna bring um, we were very lucky that one day after her treatment I think it was right after radiation and the high dose steroids and the morphine um, she got put on that she felt okay so I'm like let's go take a drive let's just get out of the house we've been stuffed up in the house let's go there was a lake above us that we hadn't seen so we loaded the puppies we took a drive um, stopped at some little local barbecue shack and, and got a, a sandwich for lunch and uh, and then she used her cane and we walked by this recreation area to, to the water side and sat there for a moment took a few photos and uh, it was hard even getting her from the car out to the bench by the uh, she had to go so slow and I had to you know we had the puppies on leash so we had to make sure not to get them tangled up with her and they they're anxious because they want to take off and go see and she's walking slow I'm trying to help her support her and I don't know it's just, trying to stay under an umbrella so I'm not in the oh sun yeah. and that kept yeah, it was windy so <laughs> the umbrella was like taking her away like Mary Poppins uh, cane and all uh, anyways that day I wanted to cry just because I had to use a cane to walk to the water with you guys it was just... but that was a good day I mean that was a day where you know we were able to go get out of the house and do something without having to worry about COVID and wearing masks because we was just us and the puppies and we went to a lake and got some fresh air but even then by the time we got home she's in excruciating pain again has to get in the bath has to take breakthrough morphine and uh, but we were thankful for that day we you know we posted pictures some beautiful pictures on Facebook and um, as blessed as we are to be able to do that that's like the first time we've done something like that in a long long time um, that she hasn't had pain in, at least in 2021 we're three months or almost two and a half months in to 2021 I think it was uh, early December we took a drive to Lake Conroe and kind of did the same thing she hadn't had all this pain and, and loss of mobility yet so we were able, right before it all started yeah we were able to just kind of take a slow walk with the dogs and walk around that was the only other time we've really gotten out here and seen our surroundings but you know just because we do that doesn't mean she's okay we're okay it just means that we had a good day and we had a few hours of taking a drive and being together and getting out of the house and with COVID we've been very very limited on, on what we can do and how we do it and then now with her loss of mobility it's even more so I don't know if you're a caregiver out there if you're a cancer patient and if you're experiencing anything like this you understand and uh, if you're a friend family watching this hopefully this brings some understanding to you of, of the experiences of the last few months and um, there's a lot of times I wish I could protect you from some of this or that I wish people would reach out to him more like not blow him up and make him like want to throw his phone across the room but just see how he's doing if he's okay because um, there's a lot of times we're not okay and it might be helpful to talk to someone about that yeah you know and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in segment three okay. so we'll we'll call this a wrap for segment two um yeah there's a lot a lot to cover but again we love you guys and we're your beauty all right segment two that's a wrap <laughs>